that, we can create Senators, 15 million jobs. Senators, we want to get to somebody who wants sure. to create those jobs, uh, and that is John Conrad, who supports President Trump and runs a trucking company in Pennsylvania. He has a question for you, Senator Sanders. Yeah. Senator Sanders, over my lifetime, all we've seen is more government and more expenses, cutting taxes from top to bottom or bottom to top, however you view it. Then we'll give some relief to the burdensome expenses all Americans face. Why would you not want a tax cut across the board for all Americans? Well, I do want a tax cut for the middle class and working families. But when the top one-tenth of one percent now owns as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent, when you have a handful of people with incredible wealth and power, no, I'm afraid that I will not support tax breaks for billionaires. Now, I don't know if you were there when President Trump, were you there when President Trump came to Pennsylvania? I was. Yeah. And President Trump was touting, as I understand it, the repeal of the estate tax, something that Senator Cruz supports. That's why he was there, correct? Let's talk about the repeal of the estate tax. The only people who benefit from that are the top two-tenths of 1%. 99.8% of the people do not pay a nickel in estate taxes. Senator Cruz will tell you about all the farmers and the ranchers. Well, Ted, there are 80 of them in the United States. The overwhelming majority of beneficiaries of this estate tax that Trump was supporting are people like the Walton family. Do you really believe that the wealthiest family in America should get a tax break of up to $50 billion, that the Koch brothers should get a tax break of up to $30 billion. Do you think that makes sense? I did say all Americans. <laughs> well, do you think that the wealthy should not get tax breaks? I did say all Americans. Okay, well, I happen not to believe that the Koch brothers need a tax break. Senator Cruz? Well, let, let, let me say a couple of things. One, Bernie once again said, oh, look, it's the super rich that we're going to pay the taxes. It's the, the top one-tenth of one percent, the millionaires and billionaires. You notice Bernie hasn't responded to the simple fact that if we confiscate a hundred percent of the income of everyone making over a million dollars, it produces about a trillion dollars. Where does Bernie get the other twelve trillion dollars that he's raising taxes? It comes from the middle class. And by the way, if you confiscate 100% of a person's income, the next year they're not going to work or produce it if you're going to take 100%. But let's take what, what Bernie just brought up now, the death tax. I think the death the tax is one taxes. of them. No, it's they the death tax it the because tax it kicks in when you die. You've paid taxes your whole life. No, you, and your then, family pays it, yeah. Then when you die, you see two people, the undertaker and the tax man. <laughs> no, That's you, not fair. Well, and, first, and, 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 and let me point out, you know, again, the rhetoric behind the estate tax is, oh, this is all about the rich guys. You know, the George Soroses of the world don't pay estate tax. They have armies of lawyers and accountants. They do all sorts of trusts and generation skipping. They don't pay it. The people who pay the death tax are farmers, they're ranchers, they're small business owners. Now, Bernie said a minute ago, said, oh, there are only 80. You know, there might be 80 in Vermont. Huh. But those facts are not right. And let me give some real facts. According to the U.S. Agriculture Census, there were 3.2 million farmers in, in America. 13% of the estates subject to the estate tax included farms. One third of all farmers are over 65. And if you look at from 1995 to 2016, 102,000 closely held businesses and 36,000 farms paid the death tax. What does that mean? That means a family farm, when the farmer passes away and his or her kids inherit the farm, so often the first thing they have to do is sell the farm or take out big debts. A small business, if you've got a factory in a town and you've got equipment that, that, that is employing, that has workers working, and the owner of that small business dies under the death tax, the small business owner doesn't have the fancy lawyers and accountants that George Soros has. So the small business owner ends up having the kids sell the business and end up having me, to fire the workers. It's not fair. Let me just not the walk down memory lane, but let's uh, focus <laughs> on, on taxes. President Trump has championed the Republican plan as a win for small businesses. The proposal would cut the top tax rate for small businesses, small business owners rather, from 39.6% to 25%. I want to bring in Mark Hagar. He owns Prentice Products, a specialty graphics company in Indiana, and has a question for Senator Sanders. Mark. 
Senator Sanders, you've characterized this plan as bad policy, disastrous, and morally repugnant. Yes. Matter of fact, I did. <laughs> One element of this plan calls for a reduction in the tax rate for small businesses like mine, who are already taxed at a higher rate than our corporate counterparts. Yes. Can you clarify for me sure. Look, how that's disastrous or no, bad policy is, or right, repugnant? But, but here's the point, Mark, and you make a good point. Small businesses are struggling with federal, state, local taxes. I got it. And we want to help small businesses. But, Mark, what this particular bill does, as I mentioned earlier, 80% of the benefits go to the top 1%, not to you, not to small businesses. And $269 billion go to the top two-tenths of 1%. So we can we come together in a bipartisan way and say we need to help small business. Yeah, I think you do need help, and I'm there for you. But please, as a nation, we've got to look at your issues as a small business person in a different way than we look at the needs or the so-called needs of the Koch brothers and billionaires. Does that make sense to you? Sure. Okay. Senator Cruz? You know, it's interesting. Bernie said he's there for small businesses. And, and yet, what he means by that is, is he's happy for you and anyone else to get a government check. But you notice he didn't talk about any taxes that he would cut. So... When it comes to taxes, it's interesting. So, Bernie, you focus a lot on the death tax. I get that you like the death tax. All right, fine. You and I disagree. Well, I like the estate tax, though. I like, I don't want to see it repealed. That's okay. Sure. All right. So we disagree on that. But how about some of the other elements uh, of the framework that have been put out? Because, you know, it's interesting. You're not for cutting any taxes. You're for raising everybody's taxes. So let me ask you some of the elements. One of the elements that's put out is doubling the standard deduction though, so that for individuals, the first 12000 you earn, you pay zero. For a, for a couple, the first 24000 you earn, pay zero. Now, are you for that or against that? Because you keep telling us what you're against. Are, do, do you agree with any aspect of yep. paying taxes? Yep, but I don't. So agree. you would double the standard deduction? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think it will help working class families. But right. what I am not for, Ted, is repealing the individual exemption. Uh, because what that would mean, if you have a large family, you've got two kids, right? I, I do. And uh, if, you know, a family of two, three, four kids, you know what? They're going to end up paying more in taxes. So I want to get rid of, of that uh, uh, part uh, of it. I'm not, not sure what you're talking about, but you would agree that increasing the standard deduction, letting a married couple pay zero taxes on their first $24,000 of income, that helps working class Americans? Would you agree with that component? Yep, I would. Okay, good. All right, we found some common ground. This is a, it is a miraculous <laughs> night. All right, let's, let's take a second element, an element the gentleman that just asked the question, who's a small business owner. You said you're with him. You've got his back. One of the elements is cutting the tax rate for small business owners to 25% instead of being at 39.6%. Would you agree with cutting the taxes for small business owners well, to 25% so that he can hire more right, workers? But, but, but you can't look at it this and that. You've got to look at it in a comprehensive way. Ted, will you, before we talk about the small business guy, will you agree with me that it makes no sense to lower the tax rates of the highest income people in this country. I, I don't agree with that, but answer, I'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get you, into You that, have to look at this. Would you agree with me that thousands of people will die <laughs> if, we, if we cut Medicaid by a trillion dollars and throw 15 million people off of the health insurance that they have? And that's not Bernie Sanders. That's a number of studies saying that. So to answer your question, if the question is, should we support small businesses and low-income people, the answer is, of course we should. That's the kind of tax but reform support, you we should do. I don't want to write them a check. We can lower taxes. But, but you, you, what you are that. doing is saying we're going to help a, a, a lower-income person here, a small businessman over here, but we're going to tie it to the fact that 80% of the benefits are going to the top 1%. Work with me on a tax proposal where 80% of the benefits go to the working class and middle class of this country. But, but you know, you work with me Bernie, on that? Bernie, as you... As you shared, Bernie, you and I both ran presidential campaigns. We both laid out our own tax plans. And so you don't have to ask hypothetically, gosh, what tax plan might I support? Because you campaigned on one. And the tax plan that you campaigned on was a $13 trillion tax increase. You didn't cut taxes on small business when you had the chance. You jacked them up. 
You didn't cut taxes. You didn't increase the standard deduction. You didn't actually, because your view is tax everyone, tax them like crazy, tax them at levels we've never seen, and then the government can send you a check on the back end. So when you, my tax plan, the tax plan I campaigned on was a simple flat tax of 10% for individuals and families, a business flat tax of 16%, which would be the tax you would pay. Staying on the subject, yeah. I just want to introduce you to somebody who wants to talk about the federal uh, estate, estate tax. Uh, which, as you've noted, currently only applies to inheritances worth more than uh, $5.5 million. We're, we're sticking with this issue. I just okay. want to bring somebody in. Can I just in. say something? Then we, let me we're, just respond. We're coming right to you after Senator Cruz. Okay. I just, I just want to bring in somebody who actually wants to talk about this specific issue, Scott Nash. Yeah. He's the CEO of Mom's Organic Market. He has a question for Senator Cruz, and then I promise Senator Sanders will go right to you after that. Okay. I started a grocery company with $100 out of my mother's garage, and I now employ uh, more than 1,000 people. Uh, I am extremely grateful that I now qualify for the estate tax. I learned from my parents that each of us needs to help those in need while pulling our own fair share. And I teach my children those same values. I believe that leaving everything to my kids would deny them the opportunity to gain self-esteem, satisfaction, and personal growth that comes from hard work and accomplishing goals. So why should my children, or the children of any wealthy person, inherit millions of tax-free dollars while other Americans have to pay taxes on the money they actually earned. Well, let me congratulate you on your business success and on starting, uh, starting the business. Moms, you said you called it. I'm glad it's going well. Uh, you know, to be honest, the death tax is at the end of the day. It's not about you or your kids. It's about the thousand workers you said you employ. And if you don't want to hand the business over to your kids, if you want to shut it down and lay those workers off, that's your choice. If you want to give the money to charity, God bless you. That is a wonderful thing to do. But I'll tell you, it's a terrible thing for those workers who are relying on that paycheck to, to feed their kids, to pay their mortgage. What the death tax does is other business owners like you, when they pass the business on, the simple fact that you died means you've got a massive tax bill that the only way to pay for it is to lay those people off. You know, the first question that was asked about as a young person, why should I care? A young person may be saying, well, gosh, the death tax you know, when you're 19 or 20, you think you're going to live forever. Why do I care about the death tax? Well, you care about it if you want to be one of those thousand employees, if you want to have an opportunity to, to grow in a small business, and small businesses provi provide two-thirds of all new jobs. I'll tell you, I spent a lot of time in West Texas in the agriculture community, and Bernie's suggestion that farmers and ranchers don't care about the death tax, it is nonsensical. I have sat with farmer after farmer after farmer that has a lot of land, so under Bernie's definition, they're rich. They've got a lot of land. And they go broke every year planning right. and, and paying people salaries and barely making ends meet. And yet the death tax would make them sell good. their farm. That's Ted, not fair that, that, and it's not right. That's a good